All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to chapel this morning. I just have a few announcements to share with you, and then I'll get out, get out your way. Um, just want to remind you all, thank you all, first of all, for being here. Um, we're getting down towards the end of the semester. One of the first things I want to share with you, you may or may not have been getting your worship credits as you should. I hope by now everybody has their I Attended app. Um, if you have your app and if you have your phone, do me a favor, take it out real quick because I want to share something with you. So take out your I Attended app real quick, open it up, and I want to share something real quick that'll be uh, hopefully of benefit to you as you try to shore up your attendance credits, worship attendance credits by the end of the semester. So if you have your I Attended app, open it up real quick, push where it says enter code. I'm going to give you a subscription code. All you have to type in is ant, like the insect, A-N-T, and the number nine. Push that in real quick. It will, and you should have got the message about it yesterday. If you put in that subscription code, A-N-T-9, you'll see that it'll give you some options for virtual worship credits. So all you have to do is basically watch those videos and you can get credits. Now there's eight videos uploaded right now. There will be some more videos that will be loaded up between now and the end of the semester. So I know that some of you all have some challenging schedules and it's hard to get out to the different worships. This you can do in the comfort of your own room. You can use it as a devotion. As soon as, as long as you watch the video, you'll get a worship credit for it. So we're just trying to make things a little easier. Please keep that in mind. Pass the message along. And also make sure that you're here for the rest of the chapels for the year because we have a lot planned for you and we want to make sure that you receive all those blessings. Now, we have David here. David, if you raise your hand real quick. David, one of our ministry leaders, is going to be leading out on this Tuesday. There will be a student-led prayer meeting. Uh, it's going to be over at Carter Hall, and the theme is Finish Strong. So this coming Tuesday in Carter Hall from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m., there will be a student-led prayer meeting. The theme is Finish Strong. We would love for you to be there. Now, the last thing I want to tell you before I 
head off this stage is that how many of you remember the life course survey? Anybody take the life course survey before? Yes, no, maybe. All right, so we have a life course survey coming up. That's going to begin on next week. And it's uh, it used to be a long survey, but we've been working on it to shorten it. And it has been shortened. It is basically a spiritual life survey. So we want to know what you're thinking. We want to know what's most impactful to you on campus. We want to know what we could do more of in order to impact your spiritual life. So we've created this life course survey. We put it out every year or so or every other year. And it gives us an opportunity to see what we're doing right and what we can do better in order to impact your spiritual life, to help you grow closer to the Lord. And so we want you to take that survey. You're going to see the advertisements go out. There will be opportunities for you to take it. And then we're going to have a life core party in a few weeks. So you'll see an advertisement about that as well. Now, the great thing about this survey is not only does it give us an opportunity to see where things are at, to get a pulse on the spiritual life, but it gives you an opportunity to win some nice incentives. So we're going to have some food giveaways, ice cream giveaways, and then you're going to be entered in a drawing just by taking the survey for some really cool prizes, including some AirPods, an iPad, and I believe there might be a MacBook Pro in there somewhere. So you want to take some time, about 15 minutes of your time, to take this survey, and as a result of that, you will be entered in for some drawings, and we're also going to give away worship credits, worship a lot of worship credits just for taking it. So again, if you're low on those worship credits, just look out for the advertisement. It's the Life Course Survey, and you will uh, be helping us out as we serve you in terms of your spiritual life. So thank you so much for your attention. We're now going to move on with our program. Good morning, everyone. My name is Aaliyah Lambert, and uh, we all have some quick announcements for you. So, in two weeks, March 27th through April 1st, it is going to be Women's Week of Prayer. Women's Week of Prayer is student-led, and there's a team of us who are making sure that we as women are involved in God in the, all the ways that we can be. The theme is going to be Reclaiming Her, so that is reclaiming who you as a woman are in God. Um, registration will not be happening, so it's more of come, please support. It will be happening in Wade Hall multi-purpose room, and it's going to be from 6.30, 7.30, March 27th through April 1st, so that's a Monday through a Sabbath. There will also be gift bags for those who come to the event, and then on Sabbath, there will be a dinner right after, so please come out and enjoy. It is also for the women of, of campus, so we love you men, but this is not for you specifically this time. So please come out and join. Well, hello, hello. Um, really quickly, the there is a um, women's conference sponsored by the union, I believe, in Florida. If you want to go, talk to me. We're gonna take a few young ladies down to the women's conference. So let me know. My name is Adrian. Call me, okay? Um, also, in the month of March, of course, we're celebrating Women's History Month. And this is week number two. And today we are having our focus on our men through the, wait, women through the eyes of men is today. And there's, last week we had, if you guys missed it, it was phenomenal. It was not last week, it was the first week, we had a um, poet come, and today we're having Mr. Austin speak. Next week, we're going to have a panel discussion on women, careers, family, education, and how to juggle it all. And then um, finally, we're going to have uh, the griots, or some people call them the griots, the, which is the, the storytellers. And then finally, after our culmination event of the Griots in our International Chapel, we are going to have a women's leadership luncheon. That is a registration. Um, of course, it is free to come. Last year it was phenomenal, and we'd love to see you again this year. So go ahead and scan that code to RSVP here. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Paige and I am Special Events Coordinator for this year. 
And if you all do not know, there is a banquet happening this Sunday. And if you have not gotten your tickets, make sure that you get your tickets. The sale ends Saturday at 8 p.m. Again, the sale ends this Saturday at 8 p.m. The banquet is this Sunday at 7 p.m. from 7 p.m. to 10. And we're going to have a really great time. We have a musical artist coming out. His name is Anthony Hall. If you haven't seen the, seen the videos, please check out our videos on Instagram. And we're just going to have a really good time. We're going to have good food, good music. We're having artists come out to display their artwork. We're having artists to draw you. So if you didn't get your tickets, make sure you get your tickets. And we're going to see you there on Sunday at 7. art and innovation, so I'm looking forward to see all of the creative outfits you guys have planned. I got my whole band coming, man. We're going to have a great time. Make sure you purchase your tickets. I heard they were selling out fast. I'll see you all soon. Center bring their vision to life. So what are we doing? We want to tell stories. We want to bring a writing workshop to the campus and we want to tell the stories of you, your mother, your ancestors, all the women that came before you. One important aspect about writing poetry is the storytelling. Um, being able to bring a story to life in a creative way to help people relate. And so we are looking for writers of all levels of experience. We are looking for poets, storytellers. We want to bring your stories to life through poetry. And we're going to have a six week writing workshop to do just that. And so you can expect starting this Friday for us to meet from 12.30 to 2.30 every Friday for six weeks. We will be taking everyone's stories and poems that they create and we're putting it together in a, in a book, sort of like an anthology. So you will get a photo shoot at the beginning of the workshop to showcase your natural beauty. You will get weekly writing prompts to tell your stories. Those will be edited and proofread and you will get direct feedback from your peers and myself. And then finally, when all is done, we will be collecting everyone's stories and placing them in a book that you will get a physical copy of. And so I just wanna thank Oakwood for reaching out to me and I'm so excited to meet all of you and to help you tell your stories and bring your visions to life. Good morning, Oakwood. Good morning, Oakwood. Please stand for me for opening prayer today. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us a brand new day. Lord, we thank you for bringing us to chapel this day, for allowing us to celebrate Women's History Month. Lord, please be with us today. We invite your Holy Spirit in this temple today. Bless the speaker as he speaks to us today. We love you and praise you and thank you for all of what you've done and all of what you continue to do for us, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Hello there. Who is our woman of honor today? Our woman of honor today is Jenny Dean. Jenny Dean. Please yes. let me know about her. What, tell me a little bit about her. Jenny Dean was born into slavery on April 15, 1848 in Laudan County, Virginia. 
Wow. Did she have any formal education? No, she did not have any formal education. Well, with no formal education, how did she navigate through her career? What, what does her career look like? She navigated through her career because she did not have a formal education. I mean, you know, she probably went to elementary school, and I read that she did. She went to school in Fairfax County and Washington, D.C., but there's no record of her graduating from elementary school or high school or anything of that nature. But because of that, she had a desire not only for education for herself, but she had a desire for education for others. Therefore, she took it upon herself to start raising funds to establish a trade school for black youth. Wow. So even though she did not have a formal education, Correct. she created an environment for others to be educated in, in trades and Correct. things. So was she able to raise enough funds to do that? Yes, she was able to raise funds. And um, she presented, she made a presentation to the um, National Women's Suffrage. Mm -hmm. And one of the individuals present, her name was Emily Holland. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And from there, she was able to get a large amount of money financial support, that okay. is, to establish schools. Wow. Hello, hello. Amen, amen, everybody. Can you guys hear me? Amen, amen. I know you guys just stood up for prayer, but I'm gonna invite you guys to stand up once more and help me sing this next song. This next song requires a lot of energy. Let the people pray, so please stand up and praise with me, amen. Said we have come, we have to, come give him praise, to give him praise, holy one, holy ancient, one of days. ancient of days. We have come, we have in, come victory, in victory, filled with love, filled with and, love liberty. and liberty. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah to the King you say. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the King. Said we have come, we have to, come give him to give Him praise. Holy One, Holy Ancient One, of days. Ancient of days. Said we have come, we have come in victory, victory filled with love, filled with love and, liberty. and liberty. Said Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the King you say. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 We give the glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the King. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. All praise, all praises be to the King of kings and the Lord our God. He is wonderful. Sing all praises, be to the King of kings and the Lord. 
Commencing hallelujah. gives us freedom of choice, free will. Um, one thing I like about these two songs that, were, that we sang um, is that the song talks about how we're going to praise God. It's not saying that God forced us in one space to praise Him. No, we're willingly come to praise Him because He's been so good to us. Um, this next song talks about my hands are lifted up, my heart is ready to receive a blessing from you. And I know for Speaking from personal experience, I've been through so much in my life that I'm willingly going to go to God because I know he's going to bless me. Amen, someone? He's not going to force me to do anything that I don't want to do. So if you're ready to receive a blessing from him, sing this out. from you my hands 
hands are lifted up and my heart is ready to receive a blessing from you uh, a blessing from you sing my hands are lifted My heart is ready. My heart is ready to receive a blessing from you. Blessing from is there anybody's you. testimony today? A blessing from you. A blessing from you. Sing, my hands are lifted up. My hands are lifted up. My heart is ready to receive. Blessing from you. Blessing from you. Oh, a blessing. A blessing from you. Sing, break me, make me. Break me, shake me, mold me. My heart is ready to read a blessing from you. But we just want a blessing from you. Sing, break me, make me. Lord, shake me, shake me, mold me. My heart is ready to a blessing from you. A blessing from you. A blessing from yeah. you. Sing, my hands are lifted. My hands are lifted up. My heart is ready. My heart to is ready to receive. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. Is ready to receive my heart is ready a blessing receive. from you a blessing from you a blessing from you God a blessing from you sing my hands are lifted my hands are lifted and my heart is ready to receive Blessing from you, Lord. Just a drop will do, but we want all of you, God. A blessing from you, a blessing from you. Sing, my hands, my hands, my hands are lifted. Lord, I'm ready to receive. My heart is ready to receive. A blessing from you. A blessing from you, God. A blessing oh, from you. Sing, my hands are lifted up. My hands are lifted up. My heart is ready. My heart is ready to A blessing receive. from you, God. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. A blessing from you.
name is Kiani Taylor, and I'm a spoken word poet here from Huntsville, Alabama. Um, I just want to thank Oakwood University for this beautiful program they put together for Women's History Month. So today, we have the unique perspective of hearing from the men about how they view and see and love on us. And so I was asked to bring a poem today to, to just have some reciprocity for that, okay? To just give some love back to our black men for a moment and then they're gonna return the love back to us with the beautiful message that will be brought to us today by our speaker. Is that all right with everyone? All right, so I actually would love for you all to join me in my poem today. So we're in church, this is a call and response type of feel, okay? So repeat after me. Everybody say, smile black boy. Black boy smile. Smile black boy. Black boy smile. I love to watch black boys blush blue as midnight sky, and so I write them words that crack down their backs and make them been baptized before God. See, I swallow them with soliloquies about all the beautiful things God whispers to me about them. I asked God once, what are the origins of a black boy smile? He told me I drew that after crafting the Milky Way. See, I wanted a black boy smile to soar across hearts like stars when they surf Orion's belt, so I placed space on their lips, the sun across their teeth, and wrapped Jupiter's turbulence around their tongue. Everybody say, cry, black boy. Black boy, cry. Cry, black boy. Black boy, cry. When the world tries to tell you that you're too man to cry, too testosterone to tip over and spill, Tell them God gave you grace behind your burdens, an ocean's worth at least. See, God himself told me he placed rivers in the eyes of black boys, so when a black boy is man enough to cry for me, I tell him, pretend the sun folded itself beneath your chest just to show you he rises daily with you, I tell him, to pretend he placed you on a cloud, colored its silhouette silver, and forced it to shed its own sadness, to help you disguise your own to remind you that the sky has its days where it too wants to melt and so it decides to rain and sometimes pour, just like you do too. Remember, black boy. Black boy, remember. Remember, black boy. Black boy, remember. When reaching for stars, you are allowed to fall into the clouds the way the sun falls into the night and forgets the other side of the world exists. You are allowed to wrap rainbows around your waist until sugar runs west of your spine and limbs. You are allowed to be a storm cloud or sunset or a hurricane to harness heaven in your spine or a holy ghost haunting on the shoulders of your oppressors or a poison that pretends itself honey to hide the shame of its skin or a vengeance that vows to be black and magic and holy and steel but will send fire to forbidden lands to remind the ground that God made you matter for earth to know what love feels like. That the sun calls you master each dawn to darken your melanin. That the sea sways in the rhythm of your heartbeat and tongue. That the atmosphere has to ask your permission before releasing just enough oxygen for all of us to breathe, to survive. That the stars find themselves a home in your spine, black boy. And the tips of your fingers, black boy, don't you know? I've watched the earth shift under your suffering. Watch Motherland forget her own name, sell all her babies for a chance to carry less burdens in your smile, in your limbs, on the backs of your shoulders. I've watched the moon kiss your forehead in an effort to prevent the world from self-destruction. Watch God place a rainbow in each of your cheeks as a promise for your peace and protection. I've watched the rain dive into deserts to keep your tears from turning high tide, tide into tsunami. I've watched the moon carry suns above the stars to remind you of your light. I've watched oceans pour out of your lips and make a miracle of your spine, of five loaves of bread, of two pieces of fish, and still the world will pretend like you ain't God's granted miracle magic, melanin, moon, sun, and rising. You will rise, black boy. Always rise, black boy. Thank you. Miss Kiani has been asked to lead our interpretive workshop, writer's workshop. So please, if you want to register, there's going to be a QR code here. It is a six-week intensive, and you will be a published author. Can you get excited? Thank you so much, Miss Kiani. 
Now it's time for our welcome. I know it's been like a long program already, right? But our, who's excited about today? I know I am. The theme for this month has been ekphrastic expression. It is the art of storytelling. The, this week, our story emphasis is his story is her story. You see the play on words, his story. If you've noticed, all of our participants today have been men, other than Kiani and myself, but men. Our men are so important to us, and none of us would be here without our men. Therefore, regardless of what our story is, what her story is, we want to recognize today that his story is part of it. If you haven't, um, if you haven't known already, we have this Michael here, he's gonna let us know. Who has been most impactful to you? Which lady in your life? Give me three. Yeah, well, um, for me personally, it has been my mother. My mother has definitely been the most impactful woman in my life. Um, and I do have one story about her for you. Yes, please. Yeah. So, I mean, I thought about also, you know, you were, when we were talking yesterday about our first teachers as well. And I would definitely have to say my mother was my first teacher um, with all due respect to my dad. But still, yeah, um, cause I remember specifically I was young for kindergarten, and in the district we were in in Florida, in order to get into school, because um, my birthday was in September, the cutoff was like August 28th, something like that. And in order to get to school, you had to take a test. And I remember my mom, she was, I mean, I was young at the time, like maybe five, but she was still drilling me, making sure I passed this test, because she was like, I'm going to get into school. And she did this um, because my sister is actually only one was in the, um, the class before me. So she wanted it to be as in like when I'm in school, she'll always be in school, so I have my big sister with me. And yeah, I mean, she drilled that test into me and I ended up passing, of course. Of course. And um, that's just one story about how she was definitely my first teacher. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And then um, just two other women in my life that have definitely impacted me. Definitely my grandmother mm -hmm. on both sides, so that's the two. Um, my dad's mom, who lives near us now, and my mom's mom, who passed away um, four years ago but they have definitely instilled in me so much because they are um, first generation, well, Americans, like, you know, straight from their countries of origin. Well, my grandma who passed from um, Haiti and my other grandmother from Jamaica and just the stories that they tell me about or told me about how they grew up, it definitely, you know, gives me a real, like some more perspective of just how blessed I am. I don't know where I am today. Amen, amen. So his story has her stories all written through there. So we want to thank you guys for being here today. Um, I think what's next is the introduction to the speaker. Right, is that right? Um, I want to ask my husband to come up. I don't know where he went, but um, yes. Thank you, Michael. Sorry, had some uh, logistics stuff going on at the academy. Um, Austin Reed is a business owner, content creator, and social media personality who has built a successful two-year career that continues to blossom. A class of 2022 graduate of the illustrious Oakwood University, it was apparent the small, slow pace of Huntsville could not contain Austin. And in December of the same year, he packed up his car and moved to Los Angeles, not to pursue his dreams, but to follow God's calling for his life. He has graced the presence of the entertainment industry's gems and helped market their brands and projects. Through his journey, though his journey is just beginning, his resume and determination are testaments to his desire to be great in his craft. Austin is the president of A. Michael Management and A. Michael Agency, just two of the companies this young, aspiring 23-year-old has birthed as an entrepreneur. Born on February 8, 2000, here in Huntsville, he is the son of a Nigerian-American mother and Jamaican-American father, which is probably why he doesn't take no for an answer and never stops grinding. Over his life, he has lived in Huntsville, Memphis, Tennessee, the island of Guam, Florida, and Maryland. It took this event for us to get Austin back to what we now call home. And I'll let him tell you more about his journey 
as our speaker today. Amen. Amen. Good morning. How you guys doing? Oh, y'all can do better than that. What's going on, y'all? How you guys doing? Good morning. Wow, y'all are whack this morning. Oh my goodness. Hold on. Give me one second. Let me let me pull up my script. <laughs> well, again, good morning. I first want to thank Dr. Prudence and Leslie Pollard, my mother Adrian Reed, Mrs. Stokes the um, Office of Spiritual Life, and the entire Women at the Annanite Leadership Women's Center for this amazing invitation and this opportunity. Thank you all so much. Go ahead and give it up for them. Amen, amen, amen. I also want to say happy Women's History Month to all my black and beautiful ladies here at this black, at this black institution. Go ahead and give it up for our black ladies here. I often ask myself, I say, self, where will we be without black women, right? <laughs> For those of you guys who do not know me, my name is Austin Reed, and, and I had the pleasure of graduating from this institution this past May with the best class, class of 2022. And speaking of graduating, where are my seniors at? Are there any seniors in here? Sounds about right. Uh, <laughs> well, if y'all are watching online, I just want to tell you guys congratulations. There's only six more weeks left. Finish strong. One word of advice I would say is soak it up, because it's going to go by a lot faster than you expect. Um, it's honestly surreal being on this Oakwood University stage as an Oakwood University alum. Um, it feels like just yesterday, my freshman year, I was on this stage, um, becoming a meme, making a face at a singer or even my sophomore year when I was elected as social vice president and curated and hosted, if not the best event to date at Oakwood University's campus, Oakchella, or even my junior year of college when I had to shift from a new normal and wear masks and get tested every week, or even my senior year when I was crowned as the eighth Mr. Oakwood University. I mean, there's so many memories so many things that I've done, so many people that I've met, so many friends that I've made throughout my matriculation through Oakwood University. And yes, I will say matriculation as many times as I want because there's this little fee. I don't know if you guys have seen your course and fee statement, but every year we pay this fee, matriculation fee. So I feel like myself, as well as the rest of this room, owns the word matriculation just based off of what we pay every year on our tuition. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Sorry, I'm going on a tangent right here. Um, so what's the theme for this month? Can anybody tell me? Sounds about right, because y'all don't want to interact today. That's cool. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Well, let me tell you guys. The theme for this month is, I don't even know, e e ekphrastic expressions of, of her story, and history is her story. And today, specifically, the theme is the art of women through the eyes of men. And let me just talk to the fellas for a second, real quick. Let me get a little close. Women, art. Are women not beautiful? Can that, thank you, thank you, thank you. Like, my goodness, the Lord, he went in. He went in on, on, on our black women. <laughs> when I was asked to share stories about my most influential women in my life who have helped me through this journey, I was completely stumped. Because there have been so many women who have been influential in my life for these past 23 years. From my grandmother, who was one of the handful of black students to integrate her school in a deep south, to my sister, who maintained a 4.0 GPA all throughout her academic experience and passing her NCLEX um, on the first try, to my mother, raising me as a single mother for the first four years of my life and making sure I had a father figure. There we go. <laughs> there are so many women who have played an important part in helping me become the strong, cool, independent, handsome, God-fearing, handsome, worthy, handsome man that's standing in front of you today. Bishop James Brown, 
he said this, this thing. He said, this is a man's world. But what else? What did he say after that? It wouldn't be nothing without a woman or a girl, Bishop James Brown, everybody. Proverbs 3.15 says, she is more precious than rubies and all the things thou cannot desire and not be compounded unto her. I don't think people understand how important women are, and specifically black women. Madam C.J. Walker, for example, if it wasn't for her, myself included, would be walking around looking crazy. Be like, we have Dr. Shirley Johnson. You know, when you take out your phone and, and someone's calling you and it says boo, or bae, bestie, or toxic, don't answer. Yeah, caller ID, that's, that's Dr. Shirley Johnson. Are you being Alice H. Parker? You know, it's like 40 degrees outside. It's, it's a little toasty in here. Alice Parker, she, she invented the heater, or even Ellen G. White. She helped found the school that we're sitting in right now. And I don't know about y'all, but I've seen some pictures of Ellen G. White, and you can't tell me she ain't got a little, a little melanin in her. I don't, I, I don't know what to tell you. So again, there, there have been so many influential women in my life who have helped shape me to the man that I am today. And you know, I'm just gonna talk about three. I'm gonna start with my maternal grandmother. And some of y'all, even though we're in college, some of y'all don't know what that means. Maternal, my mom's side, okay? Cool. She has helped me so much. She, number one, helped me find my love for cooking, trying new things. And, you know, I remember growing up, I would sit in the kitchen with her for hours, watching her make her banana nut bread, her rice, her greens, yams, veggie meat, etc. I remember she inspired me to want to go to culinary school. And I didn't go, thanks mom and dad, um, but I did not end up going to culinary school, but she was responsible for the one who, who, who allowed me to even want to explore that. My grandmother inspired my love for the outdoors, stargazing. I remember growing up, my grandparents would take me on walks every evening, and my grandmother would tell me the names of the constellations and the planets and all that stuff until this day, I just love being outside and just staring at the stars, honestly. She inspired my love for Christ. I remember being excited to go to church with her, seeing her walk out every Sabbath with her hat on, what bag she had today, what size heels she was wearing. <laughs> also being the oldest of not one, not two, but 22 grandchildren. I'm the oldest. Let me tell y'all something, this is a side note. When I was a senior here, I had six first cousins at Oakwood University at one time. Six. And I didn't get a scholarship for it, but it's okay. Um, <laughs> being the oldest of her 22 grandchildren, there has always been internal pressure to be great. And she inspired me to actually go to Oakwood University. You know, I'm a fourth generation Oakwoodite. My great grandmother went to Oakwood my grandparents, my mom, and now myself. Well, alumni now. So, I can't say that. <clears throat> my grandmother supported me in everything. I remember my freshman year of college, like I said, um, well, when I was a freshman, I had, I had another cousin at the time, but she would sneak us food in the dorms. She would call us 11 o'clock p.m. <laughs> They got some, got some chicken downstairs for y'all. I got some rolls. She was bringing a nice little Ziploc bag for us. Greens mashed up with the, with the bread and the, with the chicken. And she wanted to make sure her babies were fed. And I appreciate that. So thank you. She's also the oldest of her six siblings. And I'm the oldest of my siblings as well. And so we relate with that. And so growing up, she would always share with me her stories and teach me how to be the best older sibling that I can be. So she's definitely a big inspiration in my life. And secondly, my little sister, Jillian. She just turned 14, and um, she's inspired me to want to make her proud. I want her to look at me and say, that is my big brother right there. My goal is to make her proud with everything that I do. I knew that her interaction with men, her first interaction with men would be her brothers and her father. And since she was born, I've made it my duty to be the best that I can for her so that when these little boys come around, 
She doesn't accept anything less than what she deserves because her brothers set the bar too high. I mean, they're coming around. They're starting to come around, Lord Jesus. I don't know what to do. But, but she knows that the expectations, and, and they know, they know that the bar is set high. I want her to, to understand how men should interact with ladies. She's inspired me so much to want to be great. But, and let me, let me take a sip before I start on this. But, I wouldn't be anything, I wouldn't be the man that I am today without my mother, who was my literal ride or die, who has played the biggest role in my life for the past 23 years. She has been my biggest inspiration, supporter, cheerleader, ATM, therapist, teacher, and everything in between. This is probably why she invited me to come out so I can just kind of talk about her, but we'll talk about it another day. <laughs> but she homeschooled me for five years of my life and then uh, homeschooled my siblings for six years after that. She was homeschooling for 11 years in the house. How do you do that? With the same kids? You see the same kids at school that you see at home, that you see at school. How, how do you do that? She raised me as a single mother for four years of my life. She put me in college for four years, and get this, she came to work at the school so myself and my siblings could get a discount. Cut that off the tape, I don't want her to get fired. <laughs> she used to pray this prayer over me every evening, and I, I, I remember it, and I resonate with this every day. She used to say, you are the head and not the tail. You are the top and never the bottom. You are the first and never the last. And that prayer, those words, have stuck with me for the past 23 years of my life. The saying goes, behind every great man is a great woman, but I'll raise you. Behind every great man, there is a great mom. She poured herself unselfishly into me my siblings, my father, the leadership center, and everything that she does. <laughs> I see a lot of myself, I see a lot of herself in me, and sometimes I hate it, I do. But I wouldn't be the man I am without her. Proverbs 22.6 says, train up a child in the way they should go, and when they grow old, they won't depart from it. And even though my mother has been an inspiration, my dad himself, I know we're talking about women, but it's history first. My parents both have trained me up in the way that I should go, and I know that I will not depart from it. Women are a very important part of life, history. Look, ra raise your hand, you're here right now, right? A woman, a woman carried you for nine months. Like, come on now, come on. And I know I, I mentioned three, but I can't go without mentioning some very important women in my life, such as my Auntie Beverly, my cousins Carmen, Kim, Kasha, Joy, my Auntie Nikki, Auntie Chantel, Auntie Erica, my other grandmothers, Umi Karen and Grandma Rini, and all my lady cousins. I want to thank them all for being a part of my life. I challenge you today to love on your mother, your sister, your aunt, your cousin, your great-grandmother, and just tell them thank you. What woman is inspiring you today? Thank you. I just want you to know I did not invite him here so he can talk about me. Dr. Prudence Pollard said that it would be, it would be her pleasure to invite Austin. not why I came up here, oh gosh. I just want to say he is an inspiration to so many people and I pour into him all the time. And it is true that he, all of the men here should pour into the ladies who surround them, who protected them, who supported them. Just pour into these young women because we do a lot for each and every one of you. Make sure you love on your parents. 
your grandparents, your siblings, because life is precious. Don't give people words when they no longer can hear it. Give it to them now, so I encourage you all to do that. Thank you, Austin. Stay right here, please. I would like to invite our deans. There's, I think there's two in here, um, Dean Mann and Dean Hill, I believe. Are they here? Did he leave? They left? Come on, thank you so much. I do want to honor them today as well um, because they have poured into our young men here on campus. Amen? Some men have been away from home for the first time, and they need to be cared for. And so usually the mother takes care of them. Is it? And now we've got our deans, if you would come, please. And um, oh, he's here. Dean Myers is here. Awesome. Um, Dean Mann, this is for you. There's something in there. You don't want it to fall out there. Dean Hill, thank you. There's something under here. Oh. And uh, Dean Myers, thank you all so much. If we can get a picture with all of them, please. Um, Janai, I'm sorry. Could you take a picture, please? Thank you so much. Thank you. And we can, we'll ask for the, the person with closing up. Oh. <laughs> Did y'all see that? Yes, we want to. This is beautiful. Thank you. I'm going to get in the picture now. Thank you. Thank you all for, for being such a inspiration to our men, mentors, teachers, all of the things. Thank you. Our closing prayer. Thank you. Can I have everybody just stand for closing prayer, please? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for bringing us to another Thursday. God, I'm thanking you for bringing everybody to this building and ultimately, God, uh, in the spirit of celebrating our women today, God, we're thanking you for all the wonderful women that you've placed in our lives. God, I'm asking that we'll be more intentional to give them appreciation and just help us to have a great rest of the day. Help us in all of our classes and allow academic blessings to fall on this campus. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.